Welcome, right, let's recap Saturday's race and some really big performances. I want to go through all my selections as well. We have to go in-depth into them. We've had a tough day, but it doesn't tell the whole story. I thought a couple of points got away from us. The Wolf, I thought, could have been placed. And I'll touch on our strong bet in Lingfield as well now in a second. But first, I want to touch on the Willie Mullins horse in the Gold Cup. Gallop on the Champs, what a horse, lads. Really, really good horse. The way he hit the line, I thought, you know, you turned in and you thought, let's see now how good he is. Because Fury Road's a very good horse. Statler, very good horse. And he just put enough a distance between them going to the last of the line. I thought down the inside the whole way, uh, he was jumping a little bit indifferent. But I think that was just because the lack of maybe the fluency of the horse in front of him, Kenboy, was a little antsy in front of him. So just... Paul Townend was kind of just having to navigate a pathway. But when he pulled him out, and Fury Road is a real strong steer, lads. Good horse. I just thought, now we're going to test this horse. But look, he, he was only getting going, going through the line. And the way he went down over the hill. I thought equally as impressive in Sandown was the Jerry Oak, uh, whatever you call the the Elliot horse. Jerry Kalam. Looks a proper horse now. Uh, I think the Wackers form held up similar Thunder Rock Wren, a very similar race, uh, finishing third again. He finished third to the Wacker. I thought he just struggled to get into a good rhythm, but Thunder Rock Lads is a proper horse. So Jerry Kalam beat him cozy, same as did the Wacker. So, you know, two proper uh, staying novices. Um, I don't know what Jerry Kalam's going to do. Is he going to run in the Brown Advisory? It, uh, Elliot hasn't had any luck. In that race over the years. But I do think the Wacker. Uh, Frank, his form was pretty much. If, if you think a lot of Jerry Kalam. You have to think a lot of the Wacker. The boat beat Thunder Rock well. And uh, yeah really looking forward to Cheltenham. And uh, yeah on to my own selections today. The Wolf. Just to travel too wide. I thought Paddy Brennan should have kept him. In a bit tighter. You know it's two and three quarter laps. That Edinburgh um, Cup. Or whatever it's called. The Edinburgh National. I thought we were too wide and too handy uh, early. And people say, oh yeah, but you're well beaten the end. But you're well beaten the end because you're a victim of circumstance or a victim of your environment. If you jump a horse off three or four wide, you, you're, you're damn going to be, you better know you're going to be vulnerable the last couple of furlongs. It's just, it's basic maths. It's, it's science. It's not even horses. It's not jockeys. It's just science. If you cover way, way too much ground, on good ground it's all right going wide late in the day on real soft ground but if you have ground that's like good to soft on the you know on the card early you just don't want to be wide especially on an experienced handicapper then he went right down the inside late when we looked like we were going to be placed and then he ran up the back side of a horse that was coming back so the wolf got away there thought we could have got some place money back off him and then i want to touch on the horse in Linkfield. this was sick jim crowley rode him for the best Put him up as a strong bet. I really thought he'd win today. And I just thought our jockey done everything perfect, bar he done the the he done what any 10 pound claimer would do. He darted for the inside in Linkfield on the all weather. One in two hundred horses that go down the inside in Linkfield's camber in the all weather win. I'd say that, and that start statistic might even be fair. I don't want to point the finger at Jim Cowley, but I just thought it was, it was a bit lazy of him. He made a lovely move down the back where he moved one off the rail. I said, lovely, he's going to angle wide into the straight. But when he turned in, no, he just darted right down the inside rail and then the winner came wide. He, him and the winner were tracking them through. And then the winner came wide. It was. It's just you just can't do it. Anyone that knows Linkfield knows you can't dart down the inside. It doesn't work. Also, a couple of other selections that were a little frustrating. I thought Empire Steel in Sandown uh, traveled up the inner for a while, but did not in the end. And um, we had another selection. The one point win selection getting beaten whether we didn't actually see that race. I have one selection to come, but look a tough day. But we move on. I have some rock solid bets coming over the next few days, as promised. Sit tight if you're in the Patreon service. Yeah, and let's just get a, a bit of something going because it's been a frustrating January, frustrating little start to this month. But I promise you, there's a horse running Tuesday in Taunton, and if he's declared, if he gets beat. I'll give up gambling for life if he gets beat, barring a fall. 
if he gets beat. If he runs, I expect him to win by 10 lengths on the bridle. And I'm not messing around. I'm, I'm deadly serious. If he runs uh, on uh, uh, in Taunton Tuesday, if he gets beat, I'll give up gambling. All right. He'll be going out as a max bet Tuesday in the Cold Bear Sports Patreon service. Anyway, as always, Mad Morrigan here to face the good or the bad, the indifferent. But, uh, yeah, I do think... Uh, Painful to take today, but look, we move on and we try our best to, oh, jeez, how can I forget? We've all been caught. You know, how can you sidestep that? You know, you have a beautiful horse coming in off the back of a career best form, franked everywhere. All these farmers franked. And then he just bombs out in Leperstown. So you just sometimes, lads, you just can't avoid the disaster. But anyway, I fancy a few nice horses over the next few days, there's an interesting horse in Fontwell as well. I think he's in Fontwell in a handicap chase. There's a few interesting horses. There, there is one in a hurdle in Hurryford, but it's his last run for a handicap mark that worries me. But I do think he's, he, if there weren't school him around, he could be well. But anyway, I have a horse for Tuesday. As painful as it is, we will cause the bookie some pain on Tuesday if this gets declared in Taunton. All right, bet safe.